Professor Mauro Jacko, a warm welcome to our Spotlight interview. And um, I know that you're still a relatively recent recruit to, uh, to King's. So would you like to tell us a little more of your own background, where you came from uh, and what brought you to King's? Sure, with pleasure. I, I joined King's uh, last year. I'm from uh, the International Center of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in Trieste, Italy. This is an international organization of the United Nations, which I served as uh, the Director General for several years. But uh, eventually I, I, I wanted to rediscover my, my soul wow. as a, a researcher and, uh, and uh, not to be involved in the too much uh, administrative yeah. political uh, responsibilities and, uh, and dedicate uh, I mean, uh, all my time to experimental research. And this is the reason, main reason that brought me to, 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 to London last, last year. And I have to say that I found in, uh, at King's College uh, really a very fertile, uh, welcoming uh, and uh, proficient uh, and uh, a very positive environment to, to do research. Well, I was going to come back to that and will do so, but perhaps for the moment, recognizing that your own real area of research is not directly into viruses, but why don't you tell us a little bit about why and how uh, you've become motivated to work directly on SARS-CoV-2? Yes, uh, w with pleasure. Well, th th there are many reasons behind this. Uh, uh, first, uh, um, we uh, we are interested in our main research uh, projects for uh, for the laboratory are finding uh, new drugs, uh, uh, biological drugs or new treatments uh, for myocardial infarction and heart failure. Mm -hmm. However, to do that, uh, we uh, approach uh, uh, gene transfer using viral vectors. So we have more than 20 years experience in virology with both HIV and the AV vectors are used as vectors, but also studying their biology. And so basically we have a, a virology background. And when I say we, it means both myself and several of my collaborators. And, and second, we based our cardiovascular research on uh, mm -hmm. uh, screenings. So basically we, we want to find molecules that work, not through educated guesses, by th but through systematic screenings of a library of compounds, which could be small molecules, which could be sRNAs, microRNAs, so biological molecules. And, and because of this, uh, here at the, um, in uh, the Denmark Hill Campus, uh, James Black Center of uh, King's College, we have available a large high throughput screening facility with the libraries of uh, drugs and uh, small RNAs uh, that we use routinely for our cardiovascular work. So it is a combina this combination of having the libraries, the expertise in screenings and uh, the virology background that render possible for us uh, to suspend for the time being uh, our cardiovascular work and redeploy our, our skills uh, and our knowledge uh, towards uh, screenings uh, for molecules against COVID-19. Thanks. Um, the, the drug discovery pipeline is notoriously difficult, uh, and particularly going from identification of a uh, lead molecule uh, to getting that into direct patient care. It, it's typically uh, many, many years of work uh, with many failures uh, along the way. Tell us a little bit about the strategy that you're applying that might lead to an accelerated approach to getting drugs uh, that could be utilized uh, for therapy uh, during this pandemic. Yeah, with pleasure. You are you are uh, perfectly correct in saying that the path from for a new drug discovery, especially for small molecule uh, discovery into patients is tremendously long and laborious and difficult. However, the, an alternative that is uh, much quicker is uh, not to go through the process of uh, discovering and testing new drugs, but simply of uh, repurposing already existing drugs for uh, therapy. Already existing drugs uh, uh, means drugs that have been already approved by the FDA in the United States or the 
EMA in, 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 in Europe, and these drugs have already passed all the validation phase, the, secu the safety phase, and uh, of these drugs is known the interaction with the organism, it's known for the kinetics and the dose, and here the matter is simply of changing the indication of these drugs. And, and in, a, in our facility, we have available more than 3,500 of these already approved drugs, and so the, the purpose of our work basically is uh, to see whether among these, uh, this collection there is uh, any that uh, could uh, block uh, coronavirus replication. Well, um, in the last few moments, Mauro, uh, may I just go back to something you hinted at uh, at the beginning and ask you what, what really have been the standout aspects of your move to King's and perhaps uh, in particular some reflections of of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic from the King's community? I, I'm, I'm really excited uh, of, of living this moment in, 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 uh, in London, in the UK in general, because I find that uh, the response of the scientific community and of the authorities of the university is really amazing. So the, the, the here and in generally at King's, but uh, I know that it's similar to other uh, universities, uh, there, is a, there has been a, a, a tremendous facilitation of scientists towards uh, COVID-19. There are at the moment, I think, 13 uh, uh, sources where a scientist could uh, ask for grants for COVID-19 work here in the United Kingdom with a response uh, of, uh, to applications uh, that is very, very quick. And so there, there, there is this general perception that uh, the response to the uh, epidemic is not only staying at home and uh, staying up, uh, one apart from each other, but uh, the response should come from science, uh, which means uh, drug development, which means vaccines, which means understanding uh, diagnostic correlates uh, for the disease, understanding pathogens. So there is uh, this perception here in the UK, which I, which I feel very, very lively that uh, basically uh, science uh, is at the center of the response to the epidemic. Professor Mauro Jacques, thank you for spending some time with us and thank you for all the work you and your team are undertaking. Thank you. Thank you very much for hosting me. Okay.